What's going on, everybody? Welcome to uh, part one of this set review with Robert and, you know, me. Today, we're going to be reviewing all of the Magic 2020. What is this other thing up here? See that? You, you messed it up. We're going to review all the Magic 2020 cards. <clears throat> First, we're going to go white, blue, black, and then we're going to go red, green, and all the rest of the nonsense. <clears throat> so, um, I'll be your host. What am I? No, no, you're something all right. I'm like the fat guy from Conan. Yeah, I've never seen Conan. Are you serious? I've seen... He's great. Conan O'Brien. He is good. Conan, Conan O'Brien's nice. Isn't that what I'm talking Air about? Aerial Assault, three mana. <laughs> White and... A, and I'm not going to read the casting <clears throat> cost. You guys can see it. I don't have to read this. The, the casting cost is on the screen. From When I used to do the podcast and we did set reviews, we would read the, the casting cost in case you're driving and you want to know how much it costs. We don't have to do that here. Destroy a tapped creature. You gain one life for each creature you control with flying. This card is... Limited fodder. Next. I'm like, yeah, it's... I don't want to pay three mana to kill a, a, a very restricted creature. And then if I have any... Uh, if I have a Lyra Dawnbringer out, I gain <clears throat> one life. Mm, I'm good. A Johnny oh. Strength of the Pride. Oh. Five mana... Or five loyalty, <clears throat> rather. Uh, plus one, you gain life equals the number of creatures you control, plus the number of Planeswalkers you control. Okay. So, I mean, if you have one creature, you're gaining two life. Uh, negative two, create a two-two white cat soldier token named Johnny's Pride Mate. With whenever you gain life, put a one-one counter on it. Uh -huh. Making a Johnny's Pride Mates is pretty sweet. Yeah. And uh, but uh, negative two is rough because I don't want to have to negative my planeswalker to do that. But I mean, it's still good if you make if you play this and make two of Johnny's Pride Mates and then plus it once, so you're already. Yeah, I mean, this this is a very synergistic planeswalker. Uh, if you have at least fifteen life more than your starting life total, exile a Johnny Strength of the Pride. Each artifact and creature your opponents control. <laughs> you just, like shook your head and then you're like because I'm like it make wait. it cost zero, but you you're losing your Johnny just to get rid of their artifacts and creatures. This is a junk mythic. Really, you think so? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about all that. Making it a Johnny's <clears throat> pride mate is not bad. It is, but four mana to make one. Astral ancestral blade. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a one one. So this basically just has these all these <clears throat> all these equipments basically have um. That's what I'm looking for. Germ. Germ. Yeah, what's it called, though? Living weapon? Living weapon. <clears throat> you make a 1-1 one, one white soldier token and then attach it to it. It gets plus one, plus one. So it's a, this is a better. Bear. This is a 2-2 two, two bear. Yeah, but it's better than the Right, because if they kill the, the equipment, one, yeah. you get to keep it. Yeah, this card's fine. <clears throat> I mean, I, it, it'd have to be in some sort of artifact deck. I think it's a commander walker. Interesting. So, like, with this, if you play commander... You start with 40 or 30 life in commander. 40, right? 40 in commander, yep. Oh, that's insane. So you can just play this on turn four, and then you can just exile everything they have? No, you can't on do that. <clears throat> your starting life total is 40. Right. That's 20 more. Oh, your starting life total. Yeah. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Still bunk. You can't do that. I was like, oh, no, I forgot. Yes, I, I thought 20 was always <laughs> your starting life total, no matter what. <clears throat> Angel of Vitality. Three mana. Oh, I don't want to say the mana cost anymore. It's just a <laughs> habit now. Uh, if you would gain life, you gain that much life plus one pretty good effect all right not bad it's a 2-2 flyer for three as well so it's not like it's at, it terribly costed and it gets plus two plus two as long as you have 25 or more life which 25 is not really that hard to do so this is potentially <clears> like <throat> illusory angel so a 4-4 four, four flyer for three that's not bad it isn't bad on the curve of three is it better than the three three that makes other four fours when you've gained a certain amount of life per turn oh respondent angel yeah. no i don't think so not even yeah. close <clears throat> but this is m20 m19 is going to be rotating out so true Angelic gift, pretty typical. It gives flying and you draw a card. Whenever I see Fine. this, whenever I see uh, an enchantment like that that gives evasion and replaces itself, it makes me want to look at how many hexproof creatures. Look at this! Look at this light extended. that's shining on Rob. Huh. it's amazing. Like it's, it's like he's being it's super dark. It's next like to the you. rapture. Apostle <clears throat> of purifying light. Welcome back, protection from black. Uh, two mana. Again, I said the mana cost. I'm just gonna keep doing it. Two one. Two on pro black, and then you get to exile a card from a graveyard. Like this is just Yixla Jailer. If you guys remember Yixla Jailer, uh, only it has an ex it has protection from black. So no, I mean, you know, it's Withered Wretch. Yixla Jailer is. No, a, you're right. You're right. Withered yeah. Wretch. Withered Wretch was a two two though, I believe. So. Yeah, it was a two two for two two black. I think. Yeah, I said Yixla Jailer. I meant Withered Wretch. <clears throat> it's close. He's right. I'm just gonna go. See I'm sorry, guys. Bye. Sweet sisters. 
Yeah, this card seems good. I mean, the pro black is very good. The exiling specific cards from a graveyard is good. This could be really relevant in a in mono white weenie deck. Like it's a sideboard card, and to be at, at the end of the day, anything with more than one power can hit for damage. So. Also, it's nice that it, it hits two different metrics on the sideboard, which is like pro black yes. and exiling yeah. cards. So you're yeah, like, you're right. Oh, you're playing a black deck. All right, I can bring this guy in. All right, yep. you're playing a graveyard deck. I can bring no this guy trophy, in. No trophy, no cast down. I mean, fatal push. Yep. <laughs> what? Oh, you're talking about it's still modern. modern, yeah. I mean, like, I was like what? I mean, like, what? It's, it's like you don't gain the life, but it's kind of like a scavenging news. Like, pro black and modern is a real thing. You could just block death shadows all day. Like, mm. <clears throat> battalion of foot soldier. You gotta put your switch those. You don't put the, the hot drink doesn't matter, right? Rob had his hot drink on the coaster, hot, and his cold drink off the coaster. Battalion Foot Soldier, three mana. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for any number of cards in Battalion Foot Soldier, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. So this is a busted limited card. Is it though? Like yeah. there was no, because there was Legion Conquistador too. In, yeah, and in that card, and you would draft like four or five of those. Like it's extremely it relevant. All right, but sometimes like you just don't get them. Like sometimes you just don't get that many. Okay, it's not busted, but it's really good. It's fine. It's good. It's card advantage. Uh, Bishop of Wings. <clears throat> Life Snuff Harry, thank you so much for the 30 sub, buddy. Welcome back. Or or the gifted sub by Dr. Funkburger, MD. Uh -oh. um, <clears throat> uh, I forgot. What, okay. Read, read the card. Read the card. I was like, where am I going? Uh, one four <laughs> for two. Seems good. Whenever an angel enters the battlefield under your control, you gain four life. That's a, okay. Whenever an angel you control dies, create a 1-1 one -one <clears throat> spirit. Do angels have It seems like they spirits? matter. Someone said that in chat. Oh, spirits? I don't know. Like, can an angel, if an angel <clears throat> dies, does it have its own spirit? What would be cool if it created a 1-1 one, one black spirit token? I just feel like the angel, like, it already is, like, you know, dead, so yeah, to speak. Yeah, it is. It is. It's right, dead. so, like, can it die again and then make a spirit? Sure. I don't know how, I don't know how that... That is how it works. I don't know how that works. Did you read the card? <laughs> that's how it works. I guess that's a good point. That is how it works. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm going to go to the next. I don't know how I feel about this. 1-4 is fine for two. Like, it's, it's a good, good body. Rate. <clears throat> um, good body against red. Four life is not nothing, but like I That's mean, a lot. What if you go bishop on turn two, resplendent angel on turn three? See, the funny thing is, it's not five life, so you can't. You're not going to immediately make a resplendent angel token. But so if you go turn one, fountain of youth. The flavor text says they have spirits. Within <clears throat> every angel is a spirit of light that will fight as <laughs> long as there is darkness. They really so answer that question for if us. If you go turn one, fountain of youth, turn two, bishop. Say youth, fountain of youth, youth. youth. Turn two bishop into turn three resplendent angel, then you get a four four at the end of your end step. Say again. Turn one fountain of youth. Oh, so you're getting that fifth life. Yeah. It's not bad. That's really good actually. Plus you're getting like plus it's just a one four for two. Like Yeah, that he block. The body good. Body real good. <laughs> Inside every person is a spooky skeleton. <laughs> Thanos, what's going on, buddy? <laughs> brought back. We all know this card's going to be busted somehow. <clears throat> like, this is... Like, I mentioned the other day, someone's like, what do you think of brought back? And I'm like, this is a card I leave to smarter people than me. Like, choose up to two target permanent cards in your graveyard that are put there from the battlefield this turn. Return to the battlefield tapped. Uh, I mean, I think we're all well aware that this <clears throat> has a lot of combo potential. Um, But for me to go over all of the options, all the potential options that this card has... Eh, it's a little much for me. I don't think I can do it. So it's about because there's there's probably so many applications. It's being able to identify which ones are the leanest. Can I tell you something cool? As long as your courage remains, your life will not falter. I don't have any courage. Well, this is. It doesn't even exile itself. That's true. So you can turn a witness it back. Yeah, you, or could, you can snap so cast. So it like back. right off the top of my head, you could you could do any of the creatures that bring back. Um, let you cast an instant sorcery like a gear hulk so you could technically have a sack out in gear hulk and you can in a hunter uh flicker non-stop i flicker non-stop every day <clears throat> go back to it real quick yeah yeah it's not on instep or anything right it's there's not timing restricted no okay what time restricted? what do you mean how do you well i'm saying oh no they come in the, they the, the battlefield your, immediately no. yeah yeah so you could if you have like a they do come in husk, tapped but yeah but so like if you have a nantuko husk and um, something that gains you life, or a Viscera Seer, you can infinitely scry with a Gear Hulk. So Gear Hulk ETBs, cast, brought back, sacrifice the Gear Hulk, Gear Hulk goes to the graveyard, brought back, gets cast. Oh, that won't work because it exiles. It would exile. Gear Hulk like, exiles. Brought exiles back, yeah. It, yeah. But mind. I see what you're saying. The point is, 
the point is it there's makes, a lot of ways to yeah it gives it, yeah. you a lot of options <clears throat> cavalier of dawn this is a cycle this is this seems like an attempt at the the titan cycle right a very very bad attempt for i don't think it's that bad four six for five with vigilance okay fine that's a great that's a that's a decent body when it enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target non-land permanent. So it comes with a beast within. That's cool. Its controller creates a 3-3 golem artifact creature token. Um, when it dies, return an artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Like, I mean, that's not bad. You're drawing at least one card. <clears throat> and, like, if you're playing beast within anyway for, like, three mana, this costs two more. So. No, you're right. You're right. I mean, it's a 4-6 for basically two mana. I just remember when every time one of these got spoiled, I was not super impressed. But, you know, again, I get the chance to reread them. Th this one's, this one seems really good. The white one seems fine. Being able to destroy any non-land permanent, that's extremely relevant. Just, I'll blow up your Planeswalker, have this 3-3, I got a 4-6 Vigilance. Vigilance is real big, too. Right. Yeah, being able to attack and block. <clears throat> Dawning Angel, 3-2 for 5. When it enters the battlefield, gain 4 life. All right. Daybreak Chaplain, 1-3 lifelink for 2. All right. Devout Decree, two mana. Exile target creature or planeswalker that's black or red. This is just a more restrictive celestial purge. It's an it's a it's a sorcery instead of an instant. Um, Still good. In you standard. can only exile creatures or planeswalkers, but you do get to scry one. So that's this, the thing. This seems pretty good. I can see this as a one of in a sideboard. Yeah, I mean, I think the card's fine. Like, I want to be able to exile black or red creatures. If that's what I want to be doing. That's cool. Disenchant. This is a great card. I'm. This is like this is disenchants the kind of card where you're like I'm never upset about yep, this replay. being illegal yeah, yeah. and uh, it's the background <clears throat> I, I chose so I like that art it's not bad I I just feel like when I see disenchant I just I want to see it on old old card boxes not the new well, ones well, you know although I like the art though you know what they say stop complaining okay eternal <laughs> isolation put target creature with power four or greater on the bottom of its owner's library it's pretty good for, too for two mana this is actually it's great pretty good uh it, they can't get it back like it's I mean I wish it wasn't a sorcery but I mean there's a lot of times where it's more Two extremely more it's more relevant to put something on the bottom of the library than it is the graveyard. Oh yeah, for sure. Or even in exile. Cuz like for example, the gods, this deals with the gods. Oh yeah, that's true. That's actually a great point. <clears throat> it deals with God Eternal Oketra, yeah. God Eternal Bantu, Bantu, God Eternal Kefnet. So yeah, this is this is probably just a standard staple. Like people are definitely going to be playing this card. Oh, it's power th it's power. Do any of them No, I guess I guess uh Bantu's a 5/4, I think. Is Oketra a 3/6? Ronus is a 5-5. Five, five. Oketra is a 3-6. Yeah, so right. is like the one it doesn't uh, hit. Oh, well. White Fencing. loves chaining people to rocks. White does love chaining people to rocks. Oh, wow. yeah, look at that dude. Well, at least it's a lovely view. That looks like a hill giant. I don't think a hill giant's that. Hill giant's only 3-3. Three, three. It can't be a hill giant. Oh, my bad. Fencing ace. 1-1 one, one double strike. <clears throat> we all know this guy. It's yeah. fine. Everyone wants to put big equipment on this guy, but it's not super likely. Gauntlets of light. That's some sick art right there. Uh, enchanted creature gets plus O plus two and assigns its combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Um, this art, is, art this is like the Tree Folk Umbra from Modern Horizons, right? I don't, I don't know. And Tree Folk Umbra says it gives plus O plus two for three mana, <clears throat> and it assigns its damage uh, based on toughness rather than power. The difference is Tree Folk Umbra has uh, the effect that if it dies, yeah. and this has untapped this creature. This has boop. So okay. Yep. Glaring Aegis, Center's Battlefield, tap on a creature and opponent controls, plus one, plus three. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah. God's Willing, target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. This card's real good right and now with the one. Feather deck. Because, like, right now they're running the Indestructible yeah. one. They're running the Indestructible one, and you can't tell me that God's Willing isn't just better. Like, that's... it. They both scry, but having being able to attack through blockers and not only using it defensively... Seems extremely relevant when you need to push through the final points of damage. Yeah, that's true, because Indestructible doesn't let you get through. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Griffin Protector. When Whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Your father. Boop. Griffin Sentinel. Hmm. One, three Vigilance. All right. Hanged Executioner. Yes. Three mana. Okay, take it easy. Yes. Three mana for a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one flying speed. So it's it's basically the front half of Lingering Souls. Yes. And then for four mana, you can exile to exile a creature. Do you like this card a lot? That card seems really good, dude. Everything about this card is sweet. The two art one is flyers bad. For two. The name is sweet. The art is bad? No, like it's cool. It's oh, really oh, good. Like, like, yeah, no, like it's 90s sweet. bad. Yeah, it's 90s bad. I don't like, know what that means. Okay. Uh, it's oh, cool. this art's bad. Yeah, I got you. Woo! Yeah, I got you. Bad. I, I like this fun. card a lot. I like this card a lot. I understand. I, I don't know how I feel about it. 
two one ones for three. I, I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Like I'm sure this is a card that's gonna be. This is. A, I think this card is fine. It just doesn't excite me. True, but I mean, so like right, they say don't don't measure it at its ceiling. Measure it at at the base, right? At its floor. So let's say you get your you cast your lingering souls. They obviously don't want you to exile something. They end up using a removal spell on it while you're still keeping a 1-1 one, one evasive creature. I mean, that seems relevant to me. In standard context. It's a 1-1, one, one, though. It is a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> like, do I care? I like this. I don't know, man. 1-1s one, are like... What's a 1-1? One, one? A spirit. Malingering soul due to exile. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. I don't Modern know. spirits can't run this. It's too, too man intensive. It's yeah, you would just run <laughs> something else. If it said exile a spirit to exile target creature, that would Noble be Noble Hierarch is an O one, stupid. God. Get it together, James. Yeah, if there's a favorable <laughs> if there is a favorable wins deck. Got him. So what if you like I mean I guess you can go like yeah, you could go like turn two favorite ones, turn three, two, 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 twos. <clears throat> I think that's fine. Whatever. You got Supreme Phantom. That's a dude. It's not, it's, I, I hate getting excited about cards that are like, that have applications, but like they're only legal for another like three months or whatever, you know? Like, because Supreme Phantom, like M19 has to rotate like three months after this comes out, right? Like, I think they're, I think there's a slight overlap in legality. But then like once three. the next set comes out after this, that's when <clears throat> M19 rotates maybe. Herald of the Sun. It is definitely early. Uh, four four flyer. Put a one one counter on another target creature with flying. No, I don't think it's it's not standard playable. But that's a really good card. Oh limited. yeah, if you get this in limited, real good card limited. limited for sure. Inspired charge. <clears throat> Creatures get plus two plus one. Sure, we did it. Herald. Uh, when inspiring captain enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. Three three. We've seen that before. That's yeah, it's, that's a reprint. It's fine. Yeah. Leyline of Sanctity. If Leyline of Sanctity is in your opening hand, you may begin with the game. Begin with the game. Begin the game with it on the battlefield. You have X-proof. Just awesome. They reprinted these. I mean, is this card good? We, you'd have to see what happens in the in the meta. I mean, in general. Yeah. Hmm. You think this will see play? In my, in standard? I'm just. I'm really fucking with you right okay. now. Okay. Like, man, it's, I was. It's Leyline of Sanctity, man. It's I wanted like, to hit you. It's like a twenty dollar card. Man. I wanted to hit you. Which I mean, it probably won't be now, but. Or it'll go the back old, up. The old ones, the old ones have been maintaining their prices. Just the other ones have been cheaper. Like if you look at EEs and stuff. EEs. E E E E. Locks in the life chanter. Six mana for a four six. I mean, it's all right, right? If this is a five five, it's the same same rate. It's ten. ten I actually total like power the, and I like the four six more than I like five five. Because be of block, I feel like it does a better better yeah. blocking job. Yeah. When it enters the battlefield, you may have your life total become the to the total toughness of creatures you control. So if this is the only guy on the board, <laughs> it, I mean, like you get a six, you get a, you get six life, right? Do like, you? If you're a three and you play this guy, then you gain three life. You could get negative six life. It does. However, it works out. How does that? How? I'm just saying. Oh, you mean like if 12. you're at if you're at twelve and then you play this guy, then you're like, well, but it's a may ability too, so you don't have to do yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And then it gets plus x plus x, where x is your life total. So that seems pretty good, right? Like if you have if your life total is fourteen, this guy just gets plus fourteen plus fourteen. Yeah. Like it's expensive, but that's a big buff. But there's a, literally already a card that did that in standard. What is it? The Evra. Oh yeah, that. Oh, I mean that's yeah. pretty similar. I guess that's less exciting then. Let's see, Evra. I think you pay two or you pay that's four. That's how long I love you. And you switch your power, its power and toughness with your life total for Evra. I knew, I knew Patrice Evra was going to come up this way. <laughs> that's hilarious that yeah. you knew. That. I knew that. The soccer player. All right, Evra is a six mana four four. This is a four six. This is a, this is a four four. Who cares? Exchange. Oh no, but this is different. This exchanges your life total. It's close. But if you're plus fourteening this, I don't want to switch. I don't want to give this fourteen is, and then are, be like, is it is eighteen gonna kill someone, but fourteen not? No, but it's permanent. Is the point? Like I understand. So I'll go. I don't want to go to four with. Yeah, this. but you gain life. You you life link. You smack them for eighteen, and then you yeah, play four. I, I don't know. This is a card that fascinates me, but I totally respect the fact that it's probably not going to see play. Right? It's not going to see play. Right. <clears throat> Loyal Pegasus. Love this dude. Do you ever call him Pegasuses? All the time. Okay. Can you do it right now? Pegasuses. Thank you. Pegasuses. This guy can't attack or block alone. He gets lonely. He is. He's yeah. got no rider. Look that's at him. He's got a nice comfy chair. That's because Gideon's dead. He's got a nice comfy chair. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> that's, 
Look at that sweet, Ooh. sweet saddle. Uh, Master Splicer. Sweet name, by the way. <laughs> what? Master Splicer. Why? Is that sweet? What's... It's just a really cool name. This is a reprint, you know. Yeah, it's from New Phyrexia. Is it really? Yeah. Is it the same name and everything? Yeah, Master Splicer. You didn't know that? No. <laughs> but I love the way he's he's petting his little his little goalie. Yeah, it's really like it's really like a romantic like <sighs> caress there. <sighs> yeah, it's also reprinted in Modern oh, Masters. Same art too? Yeah, three different cards. Three this is the third printing of this card. Master. Uh when it enters the battlefield, make a three three and golems you control get one one. So come on, it's making a four four. Um This card's good. I mean it's five power over for, for four mana. Needs a cost three. Then it's just Blade Splicer. It's just a better Blade Splicer. Mm -hmm. Moment of Heroism. If you ask Frank nicely, you can also caress this little goalie. <laughs> Did you call it a goalie? Yeah, it's goalie. <laughs> it's a little goalie. Oh, Lord. Target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains lifelink until end of turn. I mean, as far as pump spell goes, this is not bad. I mean, it's really bad. But <laughs> Moreland Inquisitor, it gets first strike until end of turn. We'll play this in two-headed giant. Will we? Probably. Yeah, if it's we're not low each. To the it's not each creature gets plus two, plus two. I know. Or first strike, rather. I was just trying to slide in there, see if we could play some two-headed giant. Yeah, we can. Pacifism. Okay. This card's great. What does this, this do? <laughs> <laughs> this is how I feel when you're around. Can I feel like I got a moment's peace around here? Moment's <laughs> peace. Um. You flash it back. I feel like pacifism is actually <clears throat> the point where it could probably see play, especially with the gods. Yeah. Two like, I mean, two mana, being able to remove any creature for two mana, uh, especially when those creatures don't have static abilities, is actually just fine. Like, if, if they play Hydroid Crassus and you just play this on there, it's whatever. It's fine. I mean, you're never going to stop them from drawing the cards and getting the life, so if you've got to deal with their 8-8 eight, eight flyer, like, this is a great way to do it. Plus, they can't get it back from the graveyard again. Uh, Planar Cleansing, Destroy all non permanence. This card... Like is this, this do we feel... Is this a good guy or a bad guy? It's a good guy. Like, <clears throat> accepting the fact that Esper is the bad guy right now. Anything with Narset and Teferi is a bad guy right now. Correct. So is, yeah. this, is this helping that deck or is this hurting that deck? It's hurting that deck. Sure, like, all nine land permanents? So, like, there's going to be, an, there's gonna be a, a, an adjacent white deck um, that, that's playing against the Esper deck with, all, with, like, Planar Cleansing in it? Yes. That's interesting. Don't try to crush my goalie, buddy. I won't. I was trying to touch mine without anyone seeing... How, all how would they not see that? I don't You're know. on a camera. Sorry. Don't. Why are you apologizing? I don't. Um. Yeah. I mean, planar cleansing is always super strong. Destroying all non-land permanents is pretty insane. Um. I don't know where this goes though. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No idea. Because like the decks that like because again like it's a situation where they get first crack. So you spend six to planar cleansing. They untap and play their Teferi, and you're like, oh. Right. Like that just seems. Yeah. Or what kind of deck runs this? Yeah, I mean, I didn't play it when it was when it was printed. Or you just play Teferi Time Raveler. End of their turn, you play Planar Cleansing, oh. and then you untap and play Teferi again. So maybe it just goes in the Esper deck. Actually, it goes in the trash can. Yeah, I don't know. Raise the alarm. Create two one ones. This is nice because we also already saw what was the card that was actually had. This is the Ajani, the format Ajani. Where it's like gain a life for each creature you control. This is nice because it lets you create more than one guy. Mm -hmm. So you can gain like four life yeah. when a Johnny comes down. I mean, the Raise the Alarm is great. I actually think this card's great. It's an instant, creates two one ones. Yeah, the fact that it's instant is what Everyone it's knows. Good. Everyone knows about Raise the Alarm. Rule of Law is also another interesting card to have in standard. Uh, each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. <laughs> four, three mana. It's basically Ethereum. No. Uh, spirit. What's the hell? What's the one for spirit? Eidolon. Oh, I don't want a rhetoric. Yes, I don't want a rhetoric. Yeah, obviously, rule of law came out first. What was the other? What was the blue version of this? Arcane lighthouse. No, that's what you sound like you're saying. Arcane. <clears throat> I want to say laboratory, but that doesn't sound right. It was. It was arcane laboratory. Each player can't play more than one spell per turn. Nailed it. Nailed it, and I didn't even know. I mean, this card's great. It's gonna see it'll, it'll probably see side blue play if there's a as if there's a threat. So yeah, I mean, even against <sighs> oh against what we call it, it's relevant. Um, the red enchantment. Oh, like experimental frenzy. Yes, <laughs> you're like play this, and they're like, all right, I'll play my one spell a turn. <laughs> uh, that guy's a two two now, not a not a three three or a four four. 
Safara Skies Blazer for referring to Runaway Steam Camp. Yes. Seven mana for this beefy lady. Seven mana for a 7-7. Seven, seven. That's a lot of sevens. It's basically a reverse Grizzlebrand. You may pay a white and tap four untapped creatures you control with flying rather than pay the spell's mana cost. Rob was like, you need to watch out for this card. It's got alternate costs. Remember that? On MTG Jank. Flying Lifelink as well. Go to mtgjank, <coughs> twitter.com slash mtgjank and go follow Rob on Twitter. Um, <laughs> favorable wins deck intensifies. <laughs> There's a lot of favorable wins like fodder in this set. This doesn't need favorable wins though. It doesn't need it, but like, come on, who who's it hurting? There's got to be a two mana flyer. Can you I tell you guess. something? Yeah, hit me. Other creatures you control with flying have indestructible. Rob. Oh my god, you know what this goes great with? The three four that gives everything else hexproof. Three four <gasps> that gives everything hexproof. Yeah, the angel for four mana, and it has the text where you can pay six and pump all your dudes. Basically, it gets indestructible, oh. and they can't target your Safara. Oh, that's interesting. So, like, it's like a Sterling Grove kind of effect. Shalai. Shalai, that's it, yeah. Wow, two <clears> people <throat> said Shalia? Who's Shalia? That's, that's uh, like Thalia, but with a with an S. Mm -hmm. That's the flying Thalia. It's planet cleansing time, boys. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Is there any 1-1? One, one? Oh, Loyal Pegasus is a 2-1 flyer for 1. That's right. So, if you can go flyers up the curve, then on turn 5, you can cast this after you cast your, your Shalai. You can probably cast it on turn 4 if you play the 2-1-1 one, one flyers for 3 on turn 2. Or turn 3. That's right. You go Pegasus, 2-drop, the 2 flyers on turn 3, and then on turn 4, you'll have 4 flyers. Then you can play play this. <laughs> Sheila. It's Sheila. Not Shalai. <clears throat> Soul Mender. Gain a life. 1-1. One, one. Okay, I'll do that. Safara plus Planar Cleansing doesn't work, right? Safara plus Planar Cleansing. Is Planar Cleansing destroy all non-land permanents or exile? Yes, it's destroy. Oh, so that does work. Interesting. Well, it would kill... It would kill, it would the, kill the angel Safara. first, but then, like... Nothing else would die, though. Right. Still pretty pretty good. 2-2 two, two for 5. All right, you got my attention. <laughs> squad counters are not a one on counter for each other creature you control. All right, that's not bad. I misjudged you, Squad Captain. I wish it, if that was the case, I, I think it actually would be playable if it cost four mana. This and it was a one-one. Squad Captain. Yep. I mean, this is it's the problem with this is that it's a terrible top deck, right? Like you draw this, and and like you're just like, okay, I have no other guys. I'll I'll play a five mana two two. And you're like, all right, cool. Anyway, it's a limited card. Let's be honest. <clears throat> two two for two enchantment spells cost one less to cast. Uh, whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on Starfield Mystic. This is literally just the green, the white version of um, Harold of... What's it, what was that dude's name? You remember Harold? Remember Harold? Harold. H-E-R-L-D. <clears throat> um, I don't think his name's Harold. Harold of the Pantheon. It was probably a guy named Harold. 2-2 two, two for 2. Enchantment spells you, cost, you cast cost 1 less to cast. And whenever you cast an enchantment, you get a life. Yeah. Um. So yeah, they're just like they're just they're very similar cards. They're both two twos for two, that <clears> reduce <throat> your enchantment cost, uh, and then they have an ability. Yeah, this is a great EDH card for sure. Steadfast Century, three mana for a three two. And uh, when it dies, put a one encounter on target creature control. I don't think that's good enough. That's, still, I mean, it's good for limited. I played in limited. Limited, yeah, for sure. Yoked Ox. I have a feeling this is the last white card. Are you ready for it to be over? Yes. Okay. I like the card, though. Aether Gust. This is what happens whenever Rob comes over. He's very gusty. He's a gusty gentleman. He's a gusty gentleman. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> choose target spell or permanent that's red or green. Its owner puts it on the top or bottom of their library. They get to choose. I like this Who's card. Who's choosing there? I was confused by the wording. Its owner puts it on the top or bottom of their library. The owner chooses. Okay. So... I cast that on your spell. I'll just be like, I'll put it on the top. Yes, but still, that's that's a memory lapse. I'll put on, I'll put on. It's also spell or permanent, which is nice because it's the. Um, yeah, yeah. You can hit something on the stack, or you can well, do something. I'm, on the I'm saying room. it's the uh, it's the red to blast. Uh, yes. It's text without destroy. Right, you're not destroying, but it's it's targeting both a permanent or a. It's a, a spell. It's a red it's elemental. Unsubstantiate, right? Isn't that the same thing? Uh, it is. Yes. Yeah. Target spell or permanent. But it's limited. Yep. No, it's better than unsub. No, no, I'm not saying it's the same card. I'm saying it's the same ability where you're targeting a spell or a permanent. Correct. I'm not. I'm not saying it's anything to do with that. Like I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm not saying this is the same ability as Red Elemental Blast. I'm not saying it's the same ability as unsubstantiate. Unsubstantiate. I'm saying it's the targeting is the same. When you said yoked ox, and we got quiet for a second, and then you're like, "Are you ready to move on to the next one?" I yeah. was like, "Yeah." I was waiting for somebody to make a comment about me and yoked ox. 
What kind of comment? Yoke Toxis swole my nickname in softball. <laughs> I was waiting. For oh wow, it happened. I was waiting for <laughs> it. I swear I was waiting for someone to say something. Oh man. <laughs> Congratulations, buddy. Appreciate it. Agent of Trickery. I like this card a lot. I accept that it's a Tre- two three for seven mana. Uh, I accept what, that. What did I say? What trickery. I, trickery? Yeah. Which is blue. Yeah, that's whatever. I meant treachery, obviously. What I'm just letting you know. Uh when Agent of Trickery enters the battle see what I did there? When I, when Agent of Treachery enters the battlefield, gain control of target permanent. So you're I mean What's the other card? Uh, take possession. That card costs seven mana, and so if you look at this in the context of traditional control magics, right? Take possession, gain control of a permanent. Was it a creature or a permanent? I don't know. I feel like you're making stuff up. Wow, my my knowledge is <clears throat> take possession was enchant permanent. You control enchanted permanent. It had split second. It was seven mana. Oof, that's good. So this is seven mana. You're stealing a permanent, <clears throat> but it doesn't have an enchantment attached. So if this guy dies, you still get to keep it. Yeah. Um, additionally, you have like a confiscate, which is a steal a permanent for six mana. And then again, if that dies, you don't get to keep it. And bolus is clutches. If this dies, and bolus is clutches, six mana. Same thing as confiscate. <clears throat> if it dies, you don't get to keep it. This is like just a creature you play, and you can steal a permanent forever. So if you can cheat this into play somehow, it, it's very good. I think even at seven mana, like if you're playing this, like standard isn't fast enough where you don't have seven mana. Like if you just steal their Teferi that has six or seven counters on it, and you get a two three body out of it. If what it, like you can even bounce this guy, and then just replay it, which is pretty sweet. I'll take your Teferi minus. Unlike control magic, like if you bounce a control magic, they get their <gasps> thing back. If you bounce this with little Teferi, actually, it's not bad. So oh, that's sick. Yeah, and yeah, you play so, this guy, so steal their Teferi, bounce your own agent of treachery. And yeah, and they can't respond. Oh, no that's more. insane. Yeah, that seems really good. Oh wow, that's re- this card seems great. Actually, Tef- I'm I'm selling myself on this card a lot. Teferi's this time twist seems... is relevant as well too. There's twelve flicker spells in standard. Is that the new? Is that the dance craze kids are doing? The Teferi twist. The Teferi time twist. Teferi time twist. <laughs> also, at the beginning of your end step, if you control three or more permanents, you don't own draw three cards. Like that's not impossible to do. For white, white, you can cheat it into play. Um, no, because it would have had to leave the battlefield that turn. What are they saying? Uh, the the card that brings two cards back. Oh, yeah, that that would have to already be in play. Air elemental. Oh, Teferi's time. Oh, Teferi time twist. Yeah, we talked about that. Air elemental five minute for a four four. <clears throat> okay. It's a great standard. This is a. <gasps> this is, they're right. Re- that four mana card. There's a. Is it is it cost three or four? That if it's a creature with the power two or less. I don't it's know what a you're double, saying. A split card. Oh, this card, revenge revival. Return target creature card with converted mana cost three or less. Oh boy! Oh no, converted, converted mana cost. cost. That's not coming back. Yeah, no, that ain't coming back. No, there's. Otherwise, a... you can return like multiple creatures and connive. stuff. Connive. Look up connive. I think. Well, it's that's connive. just five mana. Bring a guy back from the graveyard. No, that's four. It's five mana. Oh, connive is you gain control of a creature. No, no, no. It's no. C- c- oh, you're thinking of this? Yes. I, yeah, yeah. No, I'm thinking of concoct, which is like yeah, you surveil three and then you just get a guy yeah, back. Yeah, no. Sorry. Yeah, you guys are making up. You guys are making stuff up right now. Well, we're, we're doing it anticipate's together. Anticipate's nice. I like having anticipate in the format. Is it legal right now? We I don't think so. Anticip- yeah, we already have anticipate. Do we? Yeah, it was in starter. De- uh, one of the starter decks. Wow, does he's no play whatsoever? That's nope. sad. It yeah. is an M nineteen. Wow, I still like having it. One day you'll get there and you'll be like, yeah, this is. This I is mean, I've played it before. Atemis, Atemsis, all seeing, six mana for a four five legendary Sphinx, flying. Draw two cards, then discard one card. So you're that's not bad. That's a good loot. Whenever a team sis all seeing deals damage to an opponent, you may reveal your hand. Uh, this this confused the hell out of me. Oh, well, you get confused easily. Uh, whenever it deals damage to an opponent, you may reveal your hand. I'm like, okay, here's my hand. If cards with at least six different converted mana costs are revealed this way, that player loses the game. What's what's confusing about it? Because the way it reads to me is I would lose the game. If cards with at least six different mana costs are revealed this way, that player, wouldn't that's that be a, referring to who's revealing them? That player, because it's... Well, they're, they're saying when it deals damage to an opponent, that player loses the game. Opponent, the opponent, oh, an opponent is the okay, subject okay, of the okay, sentence. Okay, 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 okay. Eight my sis? <laughs> eight M sis. Eight M sis. Eight M sis. Eight M sis. Attempt sis. All right, I mean... No, that's weird, man. It's six mana for a four five. And you gotta have six cards in your hand. We don't have to. It's still four five that loots and I wish the looting ability didn't require it to tap you, because I, the last thing you wanna do with your four five flyer is It's not loot, it's better than loot. Right, it's draw card, sure. Yeah. But like 
It's also deals damage to opponent. That's interesting. It's not combat damage. It's just regular damage. But I mean, you're allowed to reveal your hand to your opponent and lose the game without this card, Rob. You don't have to have this card to reveal your hand. Oh, yeah. You can just lose in general. <laughs> Befuddle. Neg four, neg zero, and draw a card. Seems bad, man. Bone to Ash. This is like, this card wants to be Cryptic Command so badly. <laughs> it also wants to be dismissed so badly, but it's just not. Did what if... if what it dismisses is the one that draws a card. If this said, if they could have just made this a new card that says counter target creature or planeswalker spell draw a card, I think it would actually be playable. I could see that. Like an uncommon that counters a creature or planeswalker and they just make it draw a card. Yeah, I agree, Hodge Galashi. When he said that, I, I thought the same thing. It really does want to be cryptic. That's kind of funny. Oh, yeah, this card has always wanted to be cryptic, but it's not. I told him last time, you never go bone to ash. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> have you not heard that before? No. That's a classic meme from yeah, the. It uh, is. Yeah, that's good times. Boreal, ele Boreal Elemental. Five mana for a 3-4. Oh. Floaty boy. <laughs> Spells your opponents. Cast the target Boreal Elemental. On the bright side, uh, no bright side. they're never going to want to target this with anything anyway. <laughs> yes. So you'll be fine. Yes. This He's is like, a guys, poopy icebreak region. Do, don't you want to target me, uh, guys? <laughs> I'm here. Hey, guys, me, uh, Boreal. But no one cares. No. Brineborn Cutthroat. This art is pretty sick. I like this art a lot. This dude's going to hijack this pirate ship. Yep. Oh, it's a merfolk pirate. Arr. That's That was never a thing, right? I don't know. They, they never mixed the Ixalan tribes. You had merfolk, pirates, vampires, and um, dinosaurs, right? And those never mixed. I don't think there were any pirates that were also merfolk or like pirates that were also vampires. So that's really kind of sweet. Sweet. I mean, whatever. I think. Maybe I'm totally wrong. <clears throat> Vampire pirate. Every card does want to be Cryptic Command. Uh, type line. Merfolk. Watch, I'm going to be totally wrong. There's and there's like going to be no results found. Yeah, there's no Merfolk Pirate. That's awesome. Uh, flash for a 2-1 two, for 2. That seems great already. Whenever you cast a spell during an opponent's turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Brian. I never saw this card. Well, that, now, now you have. That's pretty good and common. This card seems great. That's pretty good and common. Like, you just play this at the end of their turn, and then, like, it could just sit there and get bigger. Like, yeah. Because you're going to be countering their stuff because you're a blue asshole, right? Blue a-hole. Captivating Euro. This is mm. Rob's favorite kind of sandwich. Look at this art. What's going on here? Oh. <laughs> look at these. These look like really tiny people. What happened to with their big legs? heads? Uh, don't ask what happened to someone's They're legs. They're turning That's in Emrakul. Wow. <laughs> Return up to three target creatures to their owner's hands for six mana sorcery. No, I'm not seeing it. I'd rather just river review get their entire board. <laughs> Wasn't there a vampire pirate? No, there were no vampire pirates because I looked... I made. Vampire I Asaurus. always thought it, there should be because the vampires looked like pirates. Vam, Vampiratosaurus. <laughs> because I always looked at the vampires and I was like, these guys look like pirates. They're on ships, but they were always soldiers. Um. Anyway, this card's not gonna be. That was either is... a really good gyro, gyro, whatever you called it, or it's a really bad one. I can't tell. Um. This is just a really bad... Rivers Rebuke. Yeah, Rivers Rebuke, right. I'm like, this is just Rivers Rebuke the worst. <laughs> All right, second Cavalier, Cavalier of Gales. Uh, five mana for a 5-5. Five, five. Okay, flying. Five mana for a 5-5 five, five flyer? I'm in. When it enters the battlefield, draw three cards, then put two cards from your hand on top of your library. So you brainstorm once. Man, boy, J They're pushing it, it's, every time. Every time I see a card with a Jace ability, one single Jace ability, I'm like... That card is busted. Rest in peace. Whenever Cavalier of Gales dies, <clears throat> shuffle it into the library and then scry to. That's not bad. That sucks. This is a 5-5 five, five flyer for 5. It's still it not draws good you a card for 1. Still not good enough. A 5-5 five, five for 5 is not good enough. I think you're right, but I don't like it. It's okay. It's okay. It seems good. It's a half... Like, it's a Muldrifter. You draw one card instead of two. This is not Muldrifter. It's, it's 5 mana for draw... It's It should draw 3. It's just, I, like you put two lands back, like. Oh, you mean the and then draw them next turn and the turn after? No, you just you prismatic vista and then you just shuffle them away. Oh, you prismatic vista. Okay, I thought we were talking about standard. I'm sorry. This card is busted. This five mana card in modern. <laughs> yeah. What if he says draw three cards, put one back? That's worth it. Dang it! It's not worth it. I mean, when are you ever gonna play this over Kefnet? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so... You mean the 4-mana four 4-5 four flyer that doubles your spell every turn? That card's great. Although, that with Kefnet's pretty good. because It's, then you a, it's put... an Elemental Knight, which is relevant because Elementals are a creature type they're trying to push in the set. So, we'll see. We won't see. I know, we won't. We will never see. Oh, no. 
Cerulean Drake. That's pretty sweet. A pro okay. red. I mean, this is interesting because M Magic 2020 M20 is one of the first sets that's brought back protection in a long time. Sacrifice it. Counter a spell that targets you. That actually, this is, like, this is great, and I'm not glad that the Mono Blue Temple deck is going to have this because that seems obnoxious. I was always like, hey, you know what's worse than four Siren Storm Tamers in your deck? Eight Siren Storm Tamers in your deck. But what's, what's cool about this card is when you're playing Mono Red, it pressures them, and then you just use it when you need it. Like, that's... It's actually really cool. It's a really sweet design. On the other hand, like Siren Storm Tamer can protect your, your other creatures, which is the relevant part. Um, this guy just, worry about my face. This guy just worries about your face. Yeah, he's very nice. He's like, hey buddy, how's your face doing? Cloudkin Seer, three mana for a two one. When there's battlefield, draw a card. Should I flash? That'd be sweet. Oh, that'd be sweet. I think this would be playable. Yes, it, was, it would be playable. I would just be like, end of turn, draw a card. Yeah, because it's like think twice. You're basically just think twicing with it, and yeah, you get a two one flyer. That would be it. sick. That being said, I'm still like not. I'm still not off it. Like I don't want to tap out for that. I don't either. It's yeah, underpowered for three mana. If that was two mana, that'd be sweet. Convolute. We all know what convolute does. It's just not mana leak. Conv poop. That was my Drawn best shot. from dreams. This art is wonderful. I love this art a lot. Do you? Which fish do you want to poke? I don't want to poke either fish. I want to poke the also. One, the I don't gills. know. Is that a euphemism or are you? No, litter? it's real. I just want to. No, it's real. <laughs> every time, every time you leave, every time you leave the your living room, I poke your turtle. Why do you, you wait for me to leave? Because it'd be weird. <laughs> Do me a favor. Look at the top seven cards of your library. Put two of them in your hand and the rest in the bottom. This is just four mana dig through time, right? Yep. I mean, I think that's still good enough, right? If you could cheat it, if you're... I'm like... Okay, you play Divination for three mana that draws you two cards. <laughs> you're right. So I'm going to pay one more format. to look at seven cards. The reason I like this is because you have the Electromancer. In a late game, you can literally find two cards for seven mana. So I can see this as a one of in a blue dex. I don't think Sorcerer really makes this. Two. Yeah, I don't know. This seems like this seems definitely playable. In a long game, this card's really good. This is right. That's you what have I mean. To like counter it or two spells after it, you have to be countered. Like, I like this card. Is it better than? Oh wait, never mind. That was stupid. Was that a joke for? I was gonna say, is it better than Factor Fiction? But then I'm like, wait, I'm really, I'm having a real problem getting Modern Horizons confused with a standard set. Yeah, because it was released. Yeah, because recently. it's it was a it was released in the past two months, and like. It's the first time that an entire set was released that didn't go through standard. Yeah. Right? So it's really kind of tripping me out. I was thinking about cards the other day. I was, like, trying to think of a standard deck, and I'm like, wait, why aren't people playing this in their standard decks? Oh, and I was like, it's oh, wait, legal. it's not legal. Right. It's super weird. You can't play Yawgmoth in standard. So right now, I was literally going to be like, is this better? Would you ever play this over Factor Fiction? And then I'm like, wait, you can't play Factor Fiction in standard. This is 100% better than Factor Fiction. 100% better? I would assume so. Well, it's instant. The only, yeah, instant is the only reason I wouldn't say it's just strictly better. The reason being is because you get to choose whatever two cards you want. But then again, I, I mean, I don't know. I guess it's relevant to the deck type that it's in. Oh, you also pay four mana uh, when you have Wilderness Reclamation out. And then you go get two yeah. Nexus of Fates. And then you uh, untap all your lands and play Nexus of Fate. Yeah. This is, yeah, this card seems this obnoxious. This card seems actually with, pretty with... good in that. Yeah, that's true. Did someone say that or did you? Someone else mentioned says it seems oh, best yeah. for Nexus deck, but like. I agree. Drawing cards is the best. Play every card that draws more cards. Boom, deck. Yeah. Um, yeah, I lose games because I'd rather draw cards than win them. Dungeon Geists. Four mana for a 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battle, we know what Dungeon Geist does. Tap a creature that doesn't untap as long as Dungeon Geist is around. Dungeon Geist is actually a pretty reasonable reasonable creature for... Rob does not Rob does not agree. I feel like this is, a, this is a little too hostile of a world for Dungeon Geists, unfortunately. You know what I mean? Like, it's a 3-3... Three, three. It doesn't... It, the red deck, it's not going to do much. Against any deck with Teferi, it's not going to do much. It's got, it doesn't have anywhere near the impact it should have at four mana cost. Because I, I... Do you think... I know a drunk. Thank you so much for the reset, buddy. Welcome back. Welcome back. Do you think there are too many Planeswalkers right now? No, I think the Planeswalkers are sweet. All right. Well, I guess we're just going to agree to this. I think, the player, I think the Planeswalkers are awesome. I think there's just too many. I think there's too many Teferis. I don't mind seeing Kioras and Vraskas and, and Tibbles, but like, I don't think there should be Teferi, Narset, and Teferi. I don't think there should be 12 of those things in like every deck. I think if those were on the curb, I think it'd be a lot cooler the number of the number and type of Planeswalker <clears throat> we see. Fairy Miscreant. This is, seems just worse than Fairy Seer, which is just recently printed in Modern Horizons. No, you think it's worse? Yes. Oh, you have to control another one, right? Right. Okay, yeah. Otherwise, you're just scrying for two. Yeah, it's worse. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because you're not going to play either. So, Nope. Flood of Tears. This is what happens when a Rob comes over. 
Uh, six mana, return all non-land permanents to their owner's hands, even yours. If you return four or more non-token permanents you control, you may put a permanent from your hand on the This card seems pretty sweet. It's not bad. You can just literally bounce all the permanents and play a Teferi. Yeah, this seems pretty sweet. But is it better than River's Rebuke, where you're just bouncing all their stuff, and then you just can keep not. all your stuff, right? So I'd rather keep well, all my yes. stuff than one thing. Yes, if there is an eight, like, Omniscience... Eight omniscience? Well, I was gonna say if there's like an eight, nine, or ten mana permanent that you wanted to put into play. Oh, so you just put so in this. Put this is six mana way to cheat in to wipe the board, play omniscience, and then start casting your entire hand. Uh, Rivers Rebuke will cycle out. I don't yeah. know when though. When does that? Is Ixalan, know. uh, Rivals, and M19 cycling out at the same time? I wish I knew. I feel like they've changed the standard rotation so many times in the past five years that I actually have no idea. Anyway. I do like your application here. I, I I like. Yeah, that's that's a real thing. You're a real thing. Oh, I love this art. Fortress crab. I, well, I love the that, eyes. I want to poke that dude in the eyes. Don't poke anybody in the eyes. It's a one six for four, and that's all you need to know, my friends. Wait, go back. I want to read the text. Okay. Unbreakable and unappetizing, <laughs> the crab grows uninterrupted, sometimes to the size of a cottage. Cottage cheese and beyond. Okay. Frilled sea serpent, six mana for a four six. Oop. Frilled sea serpent can't be blocked. <laughs> can't be blocked reel it in no wait throw it back <laughs> <laughs> that's great frost links two two for three when it enters the battlefield tap dark creature and put control this is just a, a better dungeon guys <laughs> this is well it doesn't stay tapped forever i know i mean frost links has seen fringe play in standard at at certain points but i don't it's not likely hardcover one mana this is a book it's just a book. It's a book. Draw a card. Oh, so it just gets a, it's a plus O plus two and makes a looter. Looter. It's just worse than Curious Obsession, right? Again, I'm just like, you have to compare these with Word, cards that exist. It's not even close to Curious Obsession. Right. Not even close. A good book is a refuge, but I a great book is a fortress. That. No, no. This is a fortress. That is a fortress. <laughs> Look at this. We go from F to F to H. Never mind. I'm an idiot. That's fine. <laughs> I'm like, wait, that's not a big jump. <clears throat> Leyline of Anticipation. If Leyline is in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. You may cast spells as though they had flash. I don't like this one as much. No, this one sucks. It's been, it's fine in like really obscure like jank decks, which we oh, love. And Legacy. Yeah, okay. You ever seen that deck? The yeah, this deck that wins on turn zero? Is that a yes? I can't tell. What happened? I don't. I don't think I do. I don't think I do know. But I'm also don't think I have to know. You know what I mean? You like, don't. No, it's a deck. You're just that saying you just like, play all I can the just be lines. like, okay, I get it. You play all the ley lines. Oh yeah, yeah. And then, and then, you, then play... you attack with them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Masterful replication. I assume is this Sahili on there? That's what I would assume. Six mana. Choose one. Those look like man. That Create looks like two a man three butt. three golem artifact. So you, so for six mana, you're making two three threes, which is worse than the rate of two normal three threes. Uh, at this point, because you can just play two Watch Wolves for four mana. <laughs> so for a rare, a six mana rare, you're already having a, a worse rate than two, but there's more two commons almost. There's more. Choose target artifact you control. Each other artifact you control becomes a copy of that artifact until end of turn. That seems kind if of. If this said choose big. one or both, I would be on board for sure. The second one's like, I mean, all right, it's a combo card, but like, what are you comboing into? <clears throat> I don't know. Leyline doesn't do anything since every deck. Yeah, this is just like a worse Tefri. <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah you're right all right well anyway six mana sure metropolis why did i say it so weird met, met metropolis sprite you like that? that's some fancy art like, metropolis sprite looking. this is a reprint as well every time you don't you, you're like wow look at this card it's a look at this art i'd be like okay well you, you clearly have never seen this before uh it gets plus one negative one until the turn so you can attack as a two one it's a flyer sure it spells not only sorceries what are you saying right now yeah of course we're just making a joke we're obviously not being literal. Was I joking? It's not exactly like Tepper, oh. obviously, but it's it's just a joke. Moat Perot. That was like a whoop. That was a little swoop I was, there. Because I, I, I didn't want to hit your microphone. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Moat Piranhas. Two mana for a 3-3 three, three with Defender. Um, I wish it was a 2-4. <laughs> I wish it didn't have Defender. No, 2-4 with Defender is fine. I still wish it didn't have it. Also, yeah, because you're like, they play Chain Whirl, and you're like, all right, I can never block this, I guess. Yeah. All right. Or it eats one spell. You know what I mean? Mu Yang Yanling. Mu Yanling. Sky Dancer. Three mana for a two. This is this is where Rob and I had some contention here. Three mana for a two loyalty planeswalker. Two is so low. She immediately goes to four, and then uh, you neg one of their creatures. 
which should take care of it on turn three you should be able to take care turn of three on the play things. you can protect her without having a creature you'd imagine negative three create a four four blue elemental bird <laughs> creature token with flying negative eight you get an emblem with islands you control off tap draw card the emblem is fantastic yeah the emblem is just... how do you feel about this card i don't know i don't think it's as bad on the surface as everyone seems to be saying it is because or... it can protect itself and it allows you to block flyers so if you look at it in the context of pay three mana, suspend one, make a four four. If you look at it in that context, then it's kind of bad. It's really bad. It's I don't. It's really. Bad. I don't like planeswalkers that can only activate once. Uh, On an egg. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, who who actually you can't you can you can only activate one ability when you cast them, right? So I play this. The oh, only right. ability I can activate is, is the plus give two. Give next to zero. And it does nothing if they don't have a creature, right? But yeah. like then she goes down to one just to create a four four. Yeah. And, like, if you kill the 4-4, four four, she's basically just dead. Yeah. I don't know. Like... <sighs> if So, the reason I think that this could see play is if there's a world where the 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 Fabloop deck is still relevant, she's a way to make a threat. There are other creature... There are other Planeswalkers that when she comes down, you're going to be attacking. She limits the amount of damage coming through to your Planeswalkers. So I think this is a card that's that benefits from being one of three planeswalkers on the board versus this is my three drop here it is. It's not I, I don't want to untap on turn 3 and cast this. There I'd rather cast Teferi and protect it and draw a card. I'd rather cast Narset, get a card. I don't think this is more than a one of in a deck maybe. And it's also interesting because the negative 8 ability is like islands you control have tap draw a card, but, but it has to be islands. How many islands are you going to have? Yeah. How, how yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know. It would have to be that blue white deck is the only thing I can think of that that will work. It's interesting. I don't think I wouldn't discount it by any means, but like, I, I don't know if it's exciting. No, again, I don't I don't think this is phenomenal. This is great, but then again, three mana planeswalkers can surprise you. So they can surprise you. Mm -hmm. Negate. What does that do? Always a classic. Uh, this is counter target non creature spell for two mana. It's a good deal. Okay. I'd probably play this. I think okay. yeah, it's probably see sideboard play a bit. Okay. Maybe one of in the main. Yeah, I mean, as, as one as one nature lifts its voice to tell you this. Okay. No. Who's one? <laughs> Takes one to no one, really. <laughs> three, three for four. When an, when Octo Prophet, and <laughs> that's a that was a great name. Yes. Uh, Scry two. Three, three for four with Scry two. That's not bad. I played them. I'll play them limited every single time. That's about it though. Portal of Sanctuary three mana. Return target creature you control each or attach to it to their owner's hand. Activate. The, why do I, no? You can return that two I mean, three. It's a cool combo card. <laughs> Like I, you're I gonna want to you're gonna want to recast your cool cards, but like, I love the artifact uh, border, the colored artifact borders. I like this art in general. Yeah, this this art's great. Is that Jace? <laughs> it's always Jace. <laughs> if you need to disappear for a while, I know a place. Billivus, Master Archivist. Oh, it's Billivus. No, that's not. I don't think Old that's Billy. Billivus. Billivus is offering you the service of disappearing. Oh. So he's probably opening this portal. I would imagine. Yeah, babe, we called that. <clears throat> Renowned Weaponsmith, uh, two mana for a 1-3. This guy is also a reprint. Uh, add two mana, two colorless mana, spend this to cast artifact spells or activate abilities of artifacts. One blue and a tap. Search your library for a card called Heart Piercer Bow or Vial of Dragonfire, which the Weaponsmith made. And uh, you can reel it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. So you just draw cards if you have them. Hold, hold on a second. I'm going to hold on. War of the Spark was a mistake. Rare and uncommon walkers are even worse than the last rule change to walkers. Can you elaborate on that? What do you mean by that? I don't think that's true at all. Like it just doesn't. There's just it just doesn't. I don't know what 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 rule is he talking about? What rule change? I uh I think it's where you can deal damage to them directly, but like that's that also. I don't see how that's relevant. Yeah, that also is. If anything, that change. that was better. That's just. I mean, that's just elegance. Like that's just an elegant rule change. Like it's it was it was confusing that you'd have to attack the player and then re or like you'd have yeah, to target the player. Yeah. And then redirect it to, oh, having two player planeswalker of the plane of, of the same type. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't. I don't think I've had a problem with that. Like it's flavor wise, it's worse, but like it doesn't really. I don't even think flavor wise it's worse because you don't think of it in the context of. How can I put that into words? I don't think it's worse because they 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 represent different things. Each card is a representation of the character at different time points. So I don't think that it's... I don't think flavor-wise it's worse. I think flavor-wise it's actually better. 
I think the problem you're overlooking is that you're breaking the space-time continuum, Rob, and Am no I? one wants to do that. Well, yes, because if you're having them... Well, to be fair, Tefri doesn't live in 2019, so aren't we doing that anyways when we cast him? How do you know? How do you know where Tefri lives? He dresses. he dresses? Yeah. Okay. Sage is a road denizen. A three mana for a 2-3 whenever a blue creature enters the battlefield. Mill two cards. That dude looks like he's made of agua. Also, here's the thing. Like, magic sets... Uh, magic developers and designers are going to explore design space. That's what they're going to do. When you make four to five sets a year, you are going to explore as much possible design space as you can. If that means making a set with uncommon and rare planeswalkers, you're going to do that. And I'm not going to begrudge them for doing that because it's a great design space to try out. And if it was a mistake, that's fine. Mistakes are going to happen. But you don't make mistakes unless you take risks. So I'm never going to fault wizards for taking risks. Uh, because that's the only way you're going to make any progress. So, Someone just said, I just saw a guy who's dressed like Tefri earlier. In real life? <laughs> IRL? Scholar of the Ages. Seven mana. I don't think this is going to be as good. Three, three. When you're not all in th- on every seven drop? I'm not all in on every seven drop. Okay. Despite my reputation. Five out of four. Uh, when Scholar of the Ages enters the battlefield, returns to two target instant or sorcery cards from your grid. That's actually not bad, though. <laughs> like, oh, it draws you two. Any, oh. ooh. I'll get back Cryptic Command and uh, Factor Fiction. I mean, there's no... Like, seven mana's too rough. Cryptic Commander. Cryptic Commanda? Commanda. Cryptic Kamehameha. Cryptic Commander. Hmm? Big, Panda. Like Dragon Ball Z? Big Dragon Ball Z fan? Cryptic Panda. I'm done with you. Yeah, so no, right? It's seven no. mana. No. <laughs> I just want a confirmation. <laughs> Sleep Paralysis. When it enters the battlefield... Why you give it a confirmation? Ta- Sorry, that's what she sounded like. Wow. Tap Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. That's a reprint, isn't it? No, this is not a reprint. As far as I know. Dang it, that's not gonna. All right, here we go. Sleep, sleeper agent. No, this yeah, is... it is. Boom. Seventeen. What the hell set is that? I know I've seen. Oh, it it's before. a Shadows of Ritter card. Yeah, I know I've seen it before. Dang, you got me on one. You idiot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Sorry. I bought you breakfast. I could say one time, one time, one is per that sandwich. You? Really? Yeah, it's real. It's a real deal. Dang. Real deal. Spectral Sailor, one one for one with flash. Okay. Frank 15, Rob 1. <laughs> That's fair. We're on the board. Hey, do you remember that time your mom sank the boat? No. What does that Dang, mean? Dang, you guys all knew it was a reprint. What does that mean? Yeah. If you guys don't know, you can go to robsmom.co. What does it have to do with sinking a boat? And uh, you can check out that clip. Rob's mom. There you go. Billy's on it. Thank you. Uh, Flying Dragon. This card actually seems good. This will one hunt. This this will probably revive the the mono blue, blue tempo archetype. deck. Yes, it's a one one for one flying. It's, it's got a evasion. Flash. It's it's it's, it's a great mana cost. sink. This is great. And it for four mana, you just get to draw cards. Like this is fine. Yeah, that card's really good. Sweet art too. The commands haven't been working. Is MTG bot in the chat? Let's find out. Yeah, MTG bot's still in there, man. What's the deal, MTG bot? I like this card. Tails end. I like this card. <laughs> to be honest, I don't like Tefri, but really the old Esper control was way worse to play against. Like, no creatures, a lot of counters. The simple presence of Planeswalkers made creatures matter more. The simple presence of Tefri 3 makes control rely a little less on reactive plays. Yeah, it fundamentally changed the meta. It did, and, and if you think about it, there was always the context of, oh, I don't want to sit down and I have to get paired against someone who's not going to let me do anything. At least you can attack it. And like you said, they push that out of the meta. My problem is, like, when they Kaya's Wrath, they still have three Planeswalkers on the board that you really have no way to deal with. It's yeah. just... Counter target activated ability, triggered ability, or legendary spell. This card is fantastic. I love this card. It's basically a stifle and a... Uh... And a counter spell for, for, for all these Planeswalkers. Oh, like, yeah. it might as well say counter target activated ability, triggered ability, or Planeswalker, right? Like, and this is fan... This this card is just great. You never lived until you've countered countered a, a activated ability of a planeswalker ultimate that kills a planeswalker that's or a fetch land that's pretty sweet oh, fetch, land. fetch lands are just gas it's pretty sweet unsummon not bad one it's, mana way to interact it's fine it's i keep bad. looking I here it's not bad. when i'm looking up at this this is me looking up where the webcam used to be yeah and now i have to look over here so it's here to here okay <laughs> unsummon listen guys and i'm like looking, <laughs> looking all the way in the corner Warden of Evo Sile. This is another reprint. Three mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Creature spells of flying cost one less. Um, this this art is fantastic, but it always... Like, it's... One thing I love about magic art is that if you look at the art, the creepiest art you're going to see, it's always going to be by a German artist. 
<laughs> it's like, it's like, who made this? Oh, Nils Hom. Okay, sure. Utterly terrifying. I'm a, I'm that amoeboid is yeah. terrible. That, that amoeboid is pretty terrifying. Look at that. Look at that beautiful boy. Look at Hello. I would poke him and run away. It's look at like it's I would just, probably kick it just to see if he would swallow my foot. It just has a very away. dark like. Oh yeah, that's all his art. Yeah, his stuff is very dark and muddied and like it's just very it's it's very creepy. Can you show him the amoeboid? I want to share that with him. No, please. No one needs to see it. No, because then I gotta like add the image and stuff. It's not as easy as like just dragging it over, because it's not screen capture. Do you have a printer? Can you print it and we'll just hold it up in front of the camera? I don't. Okay. And I don't know if I want to print any ame amoeboid. Amoeboid. <laughs> amoeboy. You're my little amoeboid. Amoeboy. <laughs> Oh my god. Anyway, this card's fine. It's a 2-2 two, two for 3. Sure. It's a bird wizard. It's a wizard. If, if blue white flyers is a thing, it's extremely relevant. If bird wizards are a thing, it's like, a girl. Oh. Winged words. Three mana. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature you control. It's flying. I never saw this card. He got real excited, guys. Yeah, because I really think there may be something here. Because this is just thought cast for birds, right? Yeah, that's bird stupid. Cast. Pay one mana, draw two cards. Like, that's really good. The reason a joke like bird cast doesn't work is because thought cast isn't called artifact cast. So I, I like the joke that I like that. It's, I called it bird cast, but as a joke, it falls a little flat for me personally because it's not completely, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I wasn't paying symmetrical. Attention. It's not symmetrical. Paying attention to what you're saying. Anyway, avian cast works better. Maybe i not just shut up. <laughs> Yarox. Wait, who's Yarox? Yarox Wave Crasher. Four mana for a 4-4. Four, four. When it enters the battlefield, return another creature you control to its owner's hand. Make it three. Then it's playable. I don't want to bounce my own things. Maybe. Maybe what? Maybe, Maybe I do. Do, do I have Muldrift Drop? <laughs> it can never cost you? Oh, you're right. Nah, it's always two. It costs one less to cast if you control a creature with flying, not oh. equal to the one less for each creature you control with flying. Okay, I'm off it now. Blue Light Flyers is for dummies. Dang it. Dum dums. We could get a whole other computer, save the image, email it to yourself, then open your email, save the image, then drag it to the screen. That's probably a good idea. I bet that could work. Zephyr Charge. I knew you. <laughs> Zephyr. <laughs> That's a red hot chili peppers, guys. It was. Target creature gains flying until end of turn. This is basically. Uh, it, no. Crap. Yeah, we're just gonna. Oh, look! That was the last. Uh, that was the last blue card. You ready to go black? Yes. Okay. Yes. Do you have a choice. Yes. Uh, you do not have a choice. I didn't personally so. Agonizing <clears throat> Symphon, not Symphony. Siphon. Siphon, right? Did you Agonizing say Siphon. I was trying to read Symphony, but then I was like, "That's wait. This is a different word. There's no why. Not the same word." I'm still looking at the webcam as if it was right here. I apologize. It's here. Not used to it. I still gotta find another solution for this. Uh, deals three damage to any target, and you gain three life. Deal. Boop. I mean, if it said four, still, I don't think it's playable. It's literally just this war leader's helix, right? Oh yeah, you're right. It is. Which I think, which which saw play. I mean, war leader's helix saw some play. It was two it's colors. Actually, better than one war helix. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a sorcerer rather than instant, but the 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 rate is is fair. You think those are like light beams, or you think you could touch those like play them like strings? I don't think they're light because well. They're holding the dude down. The dude is don't he touch looks another held man's, up. Don't touch another man's syphilis. I think is really what you want to. He looks like he's held up. He, he don't look like let me he's tell you held something. Down. Your death will take a mere moment, but it will feel like an eternity. Okay. He does look well supported. He looks very supported. Anyway, this card, I think it's fine. I wouldn't be surprised if if there was any sort of black control deck. I wouldn't be surprised if they had a couple copies of this. Like killing a chain whirler for for four. I mean, they paid three. Like and then also gaining three. It's not it's not terrible. The more you explain it, it sounds worse. Okay. This card is unbelievable to me. Audacious Thief, 2-2 two, two for 3. When it attacks, you draw a card and lose a life. That's like, pretty good. That's, this is an unreal common. Like, all this guy has to do is attack, and you draw a card and lose a life. There's a better card for the same mana cost that has more power. Tell me what it is. I can't remember what it's called, but it's in standard right now. Tell me what it is. It's a 3 mana, 3-2. Three, Basically, it's Raid. It's Ruin Raider. Ruin Raider. Yeah. Okay. Are you done? Yeah. Are you just shitting on my life? Are you sh <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's basically Raid. I just played this guy in the Mardu Aristocrats deck from Super Fritz, I believe. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, if you attack with a creature this turn, reveal the top card of your library, put that in your hand. But you lose life field with cards covered in mana cost, right? So True. if you hit another Rune Raider, you're, you're hitting three. True. It's, um, 
It's not Dark Confidant. This is more Phyrexian Arena. Ruin Raider is more Dark Confidant. True. We'll run both. Three mana for a 2-2 is expensive, but, like, drawing a not card draw every turn. Not if you're drawing a card. What if you put a Curious Obsession on this guy, and then you're like, draw two? That would be dumb, but I don't think you'd do that. You don't know what I'll do. I mean, you'd try. You have no idea. I do actually I have fly. an idea you would try. B Baroni Vampire. Baloney Vampire. 3-2 <laughs> for three. All right, cool. Blade Brand, we just saw this in... Uh, yeah, but they like to do that sometimes because then Ravnica's going to rotate. You're still going to have this for a little bit. It's for the limited format, etc. Uh, but th all that being said, like... I mean, if you have the cool interaction of playing a Chain Roller and then casting this on it in response to the trigger, that's cool. But we are, we can already do that, so we're just going over the same, the same ground here. Blight Beetle. Two mana for a 1-1. One, one. Pro Green. Creatures your opponent's control can have plus one, plus one counters put on them. Is that relevant? I don't... Sorry. Did you restart? Yeah, I, did I don't think so. I don't think that's relevant. What's he got spewing out of his little horn there? <laughs> Let's go to the next card. <laughs> All the green he absorbed is coming back out of him. So sometimes you overload on the green. <laughs> he's overloaded with... He's way overloaded with green. Um... Beats Explore. Yeah, I guess. It's a pro green card. Like, whatever. It's fine. Oh, it does beat Explore. Yeah, you're like Wild Growth Walker this. Dummy. Which is fine. Blood Burglar. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. Burglar is a funny word. Militia Bugler. Whenever I hear people burgling things, I'm burglar. just like, that's funny. Like the ham burglar? What that's you, not a serious. What do you do for a living? I burgle. Burgle. I'm a burgle. Burglar. As long as it's your turn, he has lifelink. Is it two, two for two? This is not bad. This is just Child of Night, but like you've traded one point of toughness for uh, half lifelink, right? Like lifelink half the time. Half lifelink. Frank, do you want to phone me in? I do. Will I? Mm, I don't think so. I love you though. It's not personal. It's literally just. It's personal. It's an inconvenience. The lighting looks very different. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fan of it yet. Ow, it's, my kneecap. It's Ow, my kneecap. Why are your legs spread so wide, you man? Just Easy. <laughs> Jesus, what's your deal? <laughs> Easy. Easy. I've been called Blood Burglar once or twice in my day. No one's called you a Blood and your Burglar. your name is Mean Mugger? I believe it. All right. All right. Blood for Bones. This is, uh, this is the name of my nonprofit charity. Jesus. Blood for Bones. Yeah. It's... <laughs> what do you support? Yeah, I can't. There's, we have pamphlets that you can look through. Four mana as initial cost to cast this sack of creature. So I'm paying four mana and sacrificing a creature. Return a card from your battlefield, then return another creature from your... This is actually great. This, uh, this is with the 2-3. This works with the 2-3. This is a four mana way to get back to mind control. Hold on. Hold up. So you can sack the 2-3 and then just return the 2-3? That seems great. Exactly. Yeah. Or, yeah, exactly. Whatever oh, you Oh, that seems awesome. Who cares about the haste? That doesn't matter. Oh, that's great. I'll play the 2-3 for seven. I'll sacrifice it with Blood for Bones. I'll return that, and I still get to return a creature card to my hand. I'm past this card now. Chat is <laughs> chat is hilarious. Frank, what's going on? Is it a new setup? He changed his setup to fit Rob on the screen. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, that's true, though. Like, I, I wanted to make sure the person sitting next to me would be able to fit on the screen, so I got a new webcam, which has a wider field of view. 90-degree angle versus a 78-degree angle. And uh, I'm going to see if I can adjust the... Uh, the mount that it's What'd on. you do with your old monitors? I was selling them. Okay. I sold one of them so far. I still have the other one. How much are they? How much how much am I selling them for? Yeah, yeah. I'm asking three twenty five. <sighs> <clears throat> like they were four hundred, so but I mean it's negotiable, whatever. Felipe bought one of them, so Oh. Friends and family discount? Yeah. Three twenty? <laughs> I just gave it three it was like I'll just sell for three hundred if he wants it and if you Yeah, so whatever. Blood soaked altar, six mana, pay two life, discard a card. Uh, sacrifice creature, create a 5-5 demon, activate this only on your turn. This card sucks. Which is interesting. I wish you could do this whenever, but then, like, they go to kill your guy, you sack it and make a demon in response. It's just very, very good. But, I mean, it's six mana. It should be able to have that ability. I agree with you, but it's also an uncommon, so... Because it sucks. Yeah. Thanks, Thanos. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord. <laughs> It's a nice way to say my guests are huge. Jesus. Well, it's just, it's a, it, we all know it cuts off. Like, we all know that this is this is just you're not help. You're not helping. They know, they know the Bloodthirsty truth. Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Three mana for a 2-3. Whenever you gain life, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Bloodthirsty <laughs> Aerialist. Wow, that's not bad. It's not bad. This actually could get pretty out of hand. And the flying is great. 
Yeah, this card seems fine. I mean, if there's a vampire deck, I could see this fitting in maybe. Maybe. Bone Splinters. Oh, like, cool. we all know Bone Splinters. We've seen it a thousand times. Yep. You got to think that the one going through the front of the shin's got to hurt. This is this one right here? Yeah, that one's got to hurt. Yeah, I think that's probably the worst. That one looks real bad. It's a Bone Splinter through your bone. Bone Clad Necromancer. Six, five mana for a 3 3. When it enters the battlefield, you may exile target creature you control from a great target creature you, card from a graveyard if you do create a 2 2. So it's five power for five mana, basically, which is not bad. I mean, I definitely. This and, is a very and, limited and card. It proactively exiles a card. Oh, it's from a graveyard. That's yeah. nice. That's nice. Black Cavalier. Cavalier of Night. Five mana for a 4 5 with lifelink. I like it. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature when you do destroy a creature an opponent controls. So it's basically, it's got a Shriek Maw esque ability. Uh, when it dies, return a card, a creature card from your graveyard with a converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to your hand. Or from the battlefield. That's actually, this seems fine. You think? Do you not? No. Oh my god, you're such a hater. I just, I just don't like five drops, I guess. That must be what it is. Maybe that's it. It could be it. Maybe you're from a world of four drops and... Uh, I'm a, you're just a, I'm just a, this is just a five drop in a world of four drops for you, my, my dude. Um, I think this card's nice. I think the lifelink is great. Four or five is good, a good size. Um, being able to sacrifice one of your, one of your two or three drops to kill something and then knowing you'll get that back when this guy dies is great. Uh, disfigure. Target creature gets negative two, negative two. This card, what, what were we going to say? Were you gonna say something? I was reading chat. You got something to say? It's irrelevant. This card's great. Disfigure. Uh, negative two, negative two until on turn. Yeah, th this disfigure is great. This card's awesome. Wasn't there a replacement for this recently where you're like, oh, uh, this is better? Yeah, the, the enchantment. No, not dead weight. Not dead weight. Okay. Like a one mana neg two, neg two card? Guys, Moment of craving? No, it's definitely... You're not helping me out here. You just said a replacement. In what way? Fungal infection? No, it was more recent than that. It was literally like in the past two sets. Maybe I'm going crazy. Anyway, crazy. is Rob still man sprite? Yeah, a little better. He's a little better about it now. It was way like it was like, you know how like there's a front of the chair and there's sides of the chair. His one leg was off the left side, one leg was off the right side. Like he was basically perpendicular. Jesus, what's wrong with you people? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm gonna leave. Oh man, it's so bad. Not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. You Dread presence, four mana for a three leave. three. Whenever a swamp enters the battlefield, uh, choose one. Under your control, choose one. You draw a card and lose a life. That's good. It deals two damage to any target and you gain two life. This card's great. Hell yeah, that is. <laughs> this card's Hell real yeah, good. I mean, like... It, this makes Scape Shift playable. Instead, oh, because you just get like... Yeah! Oh, wow, you get like seven swamps? If you have ten, you kill them. Well, that's uh, presuming they're at twenty. You could deal more damage. Oh, Urborg too. What about Urborg? You could just get an Urborg with some standard. It doesn't matter. This card's a printer for all sets, man. Dies the bolt. This card reminds you of Crypt Ghast, right? Like it's a it's a four mana black card that has a very black centric ability. It's a four drop, so it's really good. That's what chat said because I said I hate five drops. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. If this guy costs five, Rob would be like, I'm out. This but I think junk. I think I'd be out as well. Do you really for a uh, five on this guy for five? Yeah, because basically then it's just we already have that card, right? The the blue green one. The there's a blue green there's a blue green dude that want to bat want to want to um, whatever you uh, land in his battlefield you draw a card and you gain a life. Tatiova. Tatiova. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Well, I mean, also like. Yeah, it's the opposite. You draw a card to lose a life, draw a card, gain a life. Yeah. Uh, and this says deals two, this, the deal two damage is very relevant. Duress, a classic. Everybody, we don't have to tell you about duress. Welcome back. We don't have to tell you about duress. Embodiment of agonies. This card looks sweet. Um. Also, look how creepy and dark this art is. I wonder who did it. Oh, Igor, kill killed who? Kill real life. How many people? Okay. Wow. How many? Check out those horns. You know his neck hurts. His neck hurts so bad, his chest is screaming. I have no idea how to spell that because the arts. Igor. K I. K. K I E R. Kai No, what? no, no. I'll spell it. I can read it. I'll spell it. That's it's not it. That's different. K I E R. K I E R? Are you sure? Yes. K I E R. Okay. We went back. You, yeah, you went yeah, back. We went back. That's fine. K I. Oh, here we go. R L. Or Y. Kiriluk. Kiriluk. Okay. Okay. 
that's not the same person. That's hundred percent the same person. It's the same person. Look at that. Look at this. The uh, wait, did they do Eleshnorn? Oh yeah, they did. Wow. Makes sense now. Yeah, it's super dark. Anyway, the point is, it's flying death touch for three mana. It enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each different mana cost among non land cards in your graveyard. Seems pretty good with uh, Tamio. Oh wow, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. You know what? That would make you play Sultai. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, this uh, this card seems pretty this pretty good. good. Should be a one one to begin with, I think. There's yeah, but like or okay, a one so zero. If you have a land in your graveyard, does that have a land, does that have a casting cost? Yes, has zero. Uh, I thought it has a casting cost of zero. Thanos, have a good weekend, buddy. Does it? That's his non land. It doesn't matter because it oh, says among yeah. non land cards. They're like, you know what? People are going to ask this question. Let's just let's just cut to the chase here. Thanks for hanging out, Thanos. So yeah, this card's interesting. Uh, three mana is a great rate. Um, the the reason this can be cost this this can be costed as three at three, is that uh, it's already restricted by how many cards you can get in your graveyard. Yeah you know by the time you cast it right so yeah. like they're like okay we can make it three because on turn one and two you shouldn't be able to get that many things in your graveyard what if winding wood isn't that the green card the mulch but i don't think they go to your graveyard that's also a modern horizons card oh my god so that's what i mean like this is what i mean like i keep thinking of modern horizons cards and i'm like oh that was just printed if it has an opt it's a one one ransack the lab also also a modern horizons card <laughs> So I think what you have to realize about this card that makes it even more sweeter is if you have a one drop, a two drop, and a three drop, it's a three three. But if you have a one drop, a two drop that costs two two black, and then a two drop that costs one and a black, that's automatically a three three as well. It's different actual mana costs, so it's not total CMC. It's mana costs. Mana costs. Shut up. It's all the mana costs. <laughs> mana costs. I'm hungry. You gotta have all the different mana costs in your graveyard. <laughs> Macosis. Macosis. Oh, Lord. I like this card. That's because of all the Macosis. It costs a good amount. I can't. Okay, anyway. Ooh, Epicure of Blood. This is a reprint from... Uh... Shadows? <laughs> Macosis. Sounds like a bone. Oh, Lord. Yeah, so, I mean, it does. It's five. It's a five mana four four. Ooh. Yeah, that's true. Stitcher Supplier and... Yeah, that's and, a good uh, one. Glow Spore Shaman. Yeah, that's good. Turn one, turn two, turn three. And Charnel Troll? This this one, this card has too high a mana cost this. So we're just going to keep going. <laughs> skip skip it. Fathom Fleet Cutthroat. Human Pirate, four mana, three, three. When it enters the battlefield, destroy a creature and opponent controls that was dealt damage this turn. We've seen the this three card. mana one was better. The Vraska's one. It's, which is still legal. Feral Abomination, six mana for a five, five. Another card we have seen in... Um, Death Touchy Boy. What's that? Was it Dominaria? I don't know, dude. I'm just here. Gorging Vulture. This reminds me of you a little bit. Three except, mana for a 2-2 two, two flyer. Fly. When it fly. enters the battlefield, put the top four cards of your library in your graveyard. Huh? There you go. And you gain a life for each creature card put in your graveyard this way. That's crap. Wow, that's crazy. I hate it. I like the art, though. Oh. I'm sorry, what did you say? I like the art. It sounded like you said something in, in Spanish. You're like... I like the fart? Like the arto. That's how it sounded. Like, oh, okay. like the arto. That's not a word. Can you guys... Yes, I know, but I sounded, it sounded like it had a... Okay. Grave Digger. I heard this guy will always mill your bombs. Well, it's a good thing you have Grave Digger. Pick him right back up. Pick him, pick him, pick him back up. Pick him right back up. Oh, you know what? The Cavalier can actually get back the Demon. <gasps> Still sucks. Calls five. I'm looking at the camera right now. I'm not. That's the point, though. It's over here. God, that's so... I. That's hard to get used to. I have to really It'll mill that. the Grave Digger, too. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! Well played, well Combo. played. You gotta stack your deck better. Oh, it's okay. It's another casting cost. It's another. It's, it's another mana yeah. cost. This is mana cost. This is four now. <laughs> Three and a black. So now you have another mana cost in your graveyard. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Gruesome scourger. <laughs> His head doesn't Scour look like it Scour fits. Scourger. Nothing. This art's very strange. It is, isn't it? I want to poke him. I, mean, I want to poke him right, right in the forehead. I'm poking things. I want to poke him in the forehead. It'll manic mill the manic cost of Steven. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> I have no idea why that's so funny. 
That's great. That's great. <laughs> I got a tan. I got a tan just now. Okay. <laughs> okay, gruesome scare scourger. Five mana for a three three. When it enters the battlefield, it deals damage to target opponent or planeswalker. Control the number of creatures you control. My card reads just like the art. God, it's it's so it's sad nice. that it took us that long to read it because it's not even worth it. Knight of the Ebon Legion. This card's nice. I like this card. One mana for a one two. It's good mana cost us. Uh, it gets plus three plus three and death touch until end of turn for three mana, which is not bad. So it's a fourth four five attacker just by pumping. Plus it's like this isn't even an ability that says use this only once per turn, so you can yeah. actually make it a six seven yeah, in the late you, game. Yeah, you can easily add plus six, plus six. <clears throat> this card scales very well and it's great in the late game, it's great in the early game. At the beginning of your end step, if a player lost four or more life this turn, you put a one one counter on it. So it's like this card's fantastic. Yeah, this is a great card. It's a, it's also like a great mana cost for the for the demon. Yeah, yeah. This card's also good. Legions and two mana. Exile a creature an opponent controls with a third mana cost two or less, and all other creatures that player controls with the same name as that creature. Then that player reveals their hand and exiles all cards with the same name from their hand and graveyard. What do you think about this card? I was still laughing about what that card about <laughs> milling our mana costs, dude. <sighs> this card's really sweet. I like this card a lot. <clears throat> yeah, I mean it's basically kind of like a it's kind of like a maelstrom pulse. It's kind of like a surgical extraction. The, the, the fact is that it's limited at two is right. rough, so it's definitely matchup dependent, obviously. But yeah. being able to get rid of versatile creatures like Dark Confidants or Tarmogoyfs, like yeah. if you can get rid of all your opponent's Tarmogoyfs, like Death Shadows, get rid of all the Death Shadows, like yeah. I mean it's very it's a very it's a very useful card. Reminds um, you of the White Exile Sorcery, the one from the reminds you of Deck Modern Stone. Horizons. Oh. Well, no. I mean, that only hits on the board. Sure, but Winds of Abandon doesn't not hit on the board either. What is Winds of Abandon? What's the one you were talking about? The Modern Horizons one. Didn't they just print out a two mana one that does almost the same thing? Mm, no. It caught. It was in Modern Horizons. Oh. Oh, it's the Overload one. It's the yes, overload. that's Winds of Abandon, oh, which is okay. it's just that's Path different. to Exile yeah, that different. you overload. Right. That's different. <clears throat> yeah, this reminds me of Deck and Stone because you're exiling uh, all the things of the yes. same type yeah. for two mana. It, your, yours was better. Leyline of the Void. Sweet. Classic card. It's nice to see this uh, back in modern. I wonder what just you, kidding. Can it's you check to see what those are pre-ordering for? Like, I'm, my guess is 17. Really? I'm just straight guessing 17. I swear to God, I haven't looked it up. 17.99, TCG player. Uh, yeah, about uh, 20. No, that's the old one. Um, 2020. 2020. Also, if you go to uh, coolstuffinc.com, you can get 20% off. No. 5% off, not 20%. That would be insane. 5% off with promo code Frank5. <clears throat> so be sure to check those out. You can pre you can pre-order cards there. 1723 market value. Dude. That was good. That, that was, was a straight guess. I swear impressive. to God. I'll show you my search. Never search. That's also great to have a rare in a corset. Yeah. That's twenty dollars. Like or, you know, seventeen. Yeah, in a corset. This corset's pretty strong. It, it really is I agree, actually. It's pretty good. There's a lot of good cards. You got a little mind rot here. Mm -hmm. I feel a mind rot. Mm -hmm. Okay, good good talk. Settle around ten. I, don't I think like so. murder. Murder yep, is always that's, Good murder, clean fun. Good clean card one thing comment. murder does uh, is it makes for really awkward quotes. Um, so don't 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 quote don't add quotes with me saying things about murder because it's just not fun. I like murder at common. I'll just delete them because they look bad and they're not fun. Murder never gets old, <clears throat> right? So like that's what I mean like, um, and uh, you can always count on murder, right? Like murder, yeah, because it's just the card is just straight up murder. So you're like, yeah, I always thought murder was good, and then you're like, whoa, this is great, you know. This is, it just it makes for awkward sentences. I've murdered a few humans. No comment on being common. That's interesting. I didn't. I think wasn't it originally common and then it was reprinted at uncommon. I was gonna say I always thought it was a common. No, it was reprinted at uncommon in shadows in uh, either shadows or Eldritch Moon, whichever one that was. But Magic twenty thirteen, it was a common. Eldritch Moon was an uncommon. Conspiracy was a common. Masters, it was a common. Corset. 2019 it was an uncommon you could always so recently in standard it's been uncommon but it, it, in back in 2013 when it premiered it was un, it was a common so i'm just used to it being a common but <clears throat> this card's great i think it's also i mean this is also a card that has seen constructed play because yep. it's literally just it's like doom blade what for two but you add one black and you can kill anything instead like being able to kill any creature for just black mana at instant speed it's just it's just good it's just a good card plus it's so elegant like, it just says destroy target creature. It's just great. And the art is great. 
Noxious Grasp. Two mana, destroy a creature or a planeswalker that's green or white. You gain a life. This card's great as well. Card's awesome. As far as the... Instant speed, two yeah. mana, did deal with your Teferi. As far as the um, the cycle of, like, color hose, the color hoser cards, um, this one's a very good one. Yeah. Creatures and planeswalkers are the two things you want to be able to make sure you can kill. And uh, <laughs> the, the gain one life is interesting. Like, yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's just tacked on, but well, remember I'll take the, it. there's the the synergies with uh, the vampires, some of the vamps. Rotting Regisar, three mana for a seven six. The thing you have to keep discard a card. Is that a good enough drawback for this? Like this card seems strong. I think you have to have two of these to feel safe enough to play it. Like this seems busted. But I just, I don't think it'll get, I don't think, this card doesn't get you there. I don't think. It has no trample. Don't forget. It dies it, to everything. It is, uh, it's another mana cost is for your, it is for your agonizing demon. It's because if my first mana cost is, <laughs> was the demon, which is black, black and, and one. Yeah. This is two and a black. Right. So it's, so it's different. It's totally different mana cost. Is. <clears throat> Seven, six is just big. That's a big boy. I feel like there's got to be combos with this. Also, sometimes discarding a card is beneficial. Turtle, mm. Turtle Troll is real too. That's that's actually relevant. Oh, Gutter Bones. That's a good one, actually. Discard that, dude. Yeah, and then get him back. What's uh, Turtle Troll is three, though, right? So I hate that these compete at three. Yeah. <clears throat> Remember the timing on the discard at the beginning of your upkeep. What's your, what's your point, Walladil? <clears throat> you do discard a card to get more mana costs in the yard. That's true. Oh, because I was far away. Sorry. Frank is way louder than Rob. Yeah, that's because Rob is like... Sorry. Rob is like, yeah, so I guys want to talk about that. And I'm just like, no, I just got to talk into the mic, not... It's got a, it's got an arm. You can just pull back toward you if you'd like. <clears throat> oh, you discard during upkeep. Yeah, so if you have no cards in hand, you still get to draw a card for the turn. You don't have to like... Now you just... Okay. Sanitarium Skeleton, also <laughs> reprint. Ironically... The card right after Registrar, which is an easy card to discard, and then you can just return it to your hand. Do we have Squee? Squee would be cool. We do have Squee. It was in Dominaria. No, Goblin to Bob. No. Oh. Anyway, Sanitarium Skeleton. That's cute. I'm not paying... Scheming Symmetry. Let's talk about your favorite card. Scheming Symmetry. One one whole Manus. Uh, choose target two target players. Each of them searches their library for a card, then shuffles their library and puts that card on top. So <clears throat> this is interesting because, like, your opponent is going to get first crack at this, right? Like, you put both cards on top, they untap, they get their card. No, they don't. Okay, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm laying out, a, I'm laying out a, a path. I'm laying out a thing here. Lay it down. I'm trying to lay it down. So, the thing is, like, if they get an Ashiok, they can mill your card. If they get any, if they get a counter spell, they can counter what you're going to get. Uh, the alternative to that is if you have, like, a Teferi, then you get to draw your card first. Or if you have an Ashiok, you get to mill their card. So, like, <clears throat> there's lots of ways where, like... Either you or the opponent. Like, you have to make sure that you don't let them get their card. But if the only thing you're getting is a card that prevents them from getting their card, then, like, what's the point? So, you know. I just mill it with Jace. I like Gonti after this, and then you twirl your evil mustache. <clears throat> right, but Gonti's on top, so they would have to... You, you have, have to... Gonti in your hand. Oh, so you play this and then you play Gonti? Yeah. What, are you talking about Modern? No, just somebody said it and it was funny. Is that funny? I thought it was funny. Hmm. Or you attack them with your 2-2 two -two flyer that <clears throat> steals one of their cards and wins the game. Oh, if you have Ashok out, they just don't search because Ashok says players can't search oh, libraries. Oh, opponents. I'm telling, I'm telling you what, man. Like I always forget the static abilities on Planeswalkers. Constantly. I believe you do that. Constantly. I believe you do that. Do you not? Is it just me? I believe you. No, I don't forget them. <sighs> wow. In my face. Do you know what Kiora's ability is? No, Frank, that doesn't work. What doesn't work? <clears throat> Do I know what Kiora's ability is? Yeah. <clears throat> Don't look it up. What does Ashok say? Does Ashok say spells and abilities your opponents control can't search their library? Yes. Because this would actually, then then it wouldn't work, you're right? Oh, if it says opponents control. Uh, spells and abilities your opponents control can't oh, cause Okay, so, okay, so yeah, that, like this is you causing the shuffle, so that wouldn't work. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, See, everyone does forget You guys Tamio. are tricking me, man. I've forgotten Tamiya so forgot much Tamios. that I've countered spells that were causing me to discard before. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! I, and then I'm like, idiot! I went to do something yesterday, and like they didn't discard or something, and I was just like, wait, why do you still? Oh, damn you, damn you, no. Anyway, yeah, but either way, if you have Ashiok, you just activate it, so it's fine. But I mean, like, 
Anyway, this card's good. <gasps> it's very... It's, it, this card's interesting because it requires you to find um, a way to make it work. It re requires some work, which is really nice. This doesn't work like we think it does in Two-Headed Giant because it's we're we're one player with two heads. We're still two players, though, right? Can't uh, I no, just I don't think so. I think we're just... I think, I think you're one player. No, because when he says each opponent... Like, you're still getting two effects. Yeah, you're right. It hits both heads. Right. Like, okay. You're one team. Yeah, let's get, yeah, one, you're let's two get one of these. Wow, that would be sick, dude. It'd be like, all right, we each get to search. <laughs> uh, I'm going to search for my scheming <clears throat> symmetry. He's yeah, because if it says his. each player loses two life, like, they take four, you take yeah, four. Yeah. Right? Like, it's each player. Yeah, you're right. Oh, wow. That's nuts, dude. That's great. Yeah, that is the best. We're that, gonna... that probably is the best we'll two of the giant card of all time. We'll lose to that twice. I guarantee yeah. it. <laughs> Round one. Round two. Sorcerer of the Fang. Two mana for a one three. Okay. Uh, for six mana, deals two damage to target opponent or planeswalker. This is not bad in the late game. I mean, like limited. This is a great card. It's just a two mana one three that blocks. And then the late game, you got a really nice ability. But the Googles, they do nothing. Soren Imperious Bloodlord. This is the card I wrote about for Cool Stuff Inc. This was the spoiler card that we had, which is, I think is very good. Um, <clears throat> Imperious Bloodlord, three mana for a four loyalty planeswalker. So automatically, you have two more loyalty than the blue planeswalker, which is uh, three mana. Target plus one target creature you control gains death touch and lifeling until end of turn. If it's a vampire, put a one one counter on it. Good. This is great with like a Danto Vanguard. So you have a three one becomes a four two with lifelink and death touch. So you gain four life on turn three, and you get a four two. <clears throat> uh, plus one, you may sack a vampire when you do. Soren and Pierce Bloodlord deals three damage to any target, and you gain three life. So lightning helix, great for plus one. Like that's so stupid. Right. So it's not even going that's down. So stupid. It's like a removal and like plus there's. <laughs> Uh, there's Dusk, uh, Legion Zealot, I think it's called. The yeah, one one that draws you a card. So yeah. that's like a, care, a card you don't care about getting rid of. There's Martyr of Dusk, I think, which is a 2-1 for, for two. And then it makes a 1-1 one, one vampire dude. when it dies. Yeah. So like, there's all these vampires that are totally fine to uh, to just get rid of, right? Mm -hmm. And negative three, which is also really strong. You may put a vampire creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. So like, you can go turn one vampire, turn two vampire, turn three negative three Soren and put like champion of dusk into play and yeah, draw three look real quick in your search let's see what the highest cmc <clears throat> mana cost there is for in a standard yeah i looked this up when i was writing the article actually and i think it's like it's like six or seven but they're not good ones they're i think enough so i'll just look up vampire and then in standard. and standard yeah and then sort by cmc uh wait why what Oh, I didn't. I guess. Campire. Oh, come on. <laughs> Campire. All right, man. I got to click on it, I guess. Stupid. And Yo, I didn't know Vanguard was a, was a vampire. Wait, you didn't know Vanguard was a vampire? Yeah. No. Really? Why would I mention it? I heard you mention it because I was thinking you could, you could give it lifelink and no, then you don't have it's to the, basically the pay. Plus one, plus one counter. I mentioned wow, that like three times. Wow, that's good. Oh, my God. Descending. So you have like seven, which is Karazov. That's correct. Which is a 4-4, four, four, right? Deathless Ancient, which is six drop. Like, Haunt of Hightower was one of the cards I mentioned, Ooh. which is super sweet. I'm a big fan of Haunt of Hightower. It's a six-mana card. for It's a 3-3 three, three with Flying and Lifelink. And whenever it attacks, defending player discards a card. It doesn't have to connect. But whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on that's it. That's really good. Um, that the, makes that card good. Like the other card, card Champion of Dusk, is also the other card. It's a 5-mana 4-4. Four, four. When it enters the battlefield, you draw X cards and lose X life. So basically, ETB vampires. draw 3, just lose 3? Like, that's yeah. on turn three. really good. Right, like, I think there's a lot of <clears throat> potential for, for this Soren. Like, all of the abilities seem great if you're playing vampires. He's so. gotta be at, like, 25 or 30. Um, the only problem is that it is niche because, it, you know, it is vampire-centric, but... Uh, Soren Pierce Bloodlord... Oh, 12 That's bucks. That's it? 12 bones. Man, that might be worth it. Soul South. I mean, because you got to consider the Vampire deck was doing pretty well in Standard before that. Back so. when it had the uh, the Anthem. Radiant Destiny? Destiny well, it yeah. still does, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm saying. Soul Salvage. Return with two creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. If this was an okay. instant, would that be playable? No, because there's better options. Mm -hmm. Like, Thought to Distortion. Six mana. This spell can't be countered. Target opponent reveals their hand. Exile on non-creature, non-land cards from that player's hand and graveyard effect but the graveyard six. too is nice i mean oh you're right and it can't be countered so you can just get rid of all their planeswalkers against like the, what is like what does the esper deck do against this you just play this on six like if you can mitigate their planeswalkers they played before that point like you're just going to strip their entire hand basically <clears throat> i mean six mana is a lot but it could have a sizable impact on some decks 
Huh. Also being able to exile like Nexus of Fates huh. and Wilderness Reclamation, like I mean if they if they don't if they haven't played those. Eh, six is too much. You got two new subs, by the way. Oh, mine and Mirren. Morgan, thank you so much, buddy. Really appreciate it. Someone Goalie gifted, gifted uh gifting two sub three sub five sub okay. Goalie, thank you so much for the gifted subs, buddy. Really appreciate it. You are awesome, dude. <clears throat> Uh, Undead Servant, 4 mana for a 3-2 whenever it enters the battlefield. When it en I say whenever as if it's going to happen a bunch of times. When it enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 two -two, uh, for each card named Undead Servant in your graveyard. So, yeah. yeah. Unholy Indenture. This has to be Seb McKinnon, right? Yep. Seb McKinnon's art is so uh, recognizable. It's, it's so good. There's, there's a lot of times a lot of Seb McKinnon art has a, a really noticeable divide. Like, you can see the divide between the water and the and the... <clears throat> the not water area very very clearly you said that so eloquently i i the, the water in the land the water it's not but i'm like it's not land the water in the air uh when an enchanted creature dies return that card to the battlefield under your control with a plus one plus one counter on it mm, not curse crap nah. vampire of the dire moon one mm. one for one death touch lifelink okay this is actually fine like if there's a vampire deck this is great but here's the thing like the cards like the scorpion like the one one for one with death touch putrid rats or whatever they are all those one one for one death touch cards, they do actually see play in standard. Mardu Hate Blade. Um, all these cards that are just one ones for ones that have death touch. There has been times these cards have seen play. Uh this happens to be a vampire and it has to it happens to have lifelink as well. So And it gets bigger with your three drop? Right. You just play Soren. Like again, <laughs> this is like a two drop that it's good if you want to put Dusk of uh Dirtles. Champion of Dusk into play. It's also perfect. <laughs> yeah, this is your one drop vampire. Yeah. I mean this is I mean Legion's landing as well, obviously, but I mean, it's. I think this card is fine. Having Death Touch blocking everything. Legion's like, Landing makes a vampire token. Are you being serious? I thought it was a soldier. One one soldier with lifelink. Everything that came out of Ixalan is, is is every soldier. There's no soldier in Ixalan. It's not a vampire. I'm pretty sure. Why are you yelling at me? I came over here on my free will. Yeah, that's the story I want. Pete to that's the about. dude with the whips. That's the dude with the whips. I remember. I wanted to poke him in the forehead. Look at him. He's all happy. He's that's the dude eat. with the whips, Rob. 2019. <laughs> Vengeful Warchief. Five mana for a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever you lose life for the first time each turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Damage causes loss of life. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Villas Broker of Blood, otherwise known as Lil, Lil Brand. Lil Brand? Why is he Lil Brand? Because it's like a Lil Gristle Brand. Oh. Eight mana for an 8-8 eight, eight, instead of a 7-7. Seven, seven. Flying. No lifelink. Pay two life. Target creature gets negative one, negative one until end of turn. Uh, and a black mana. So whenever you lose life, draw that many cards. This card's really strong. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I wish it was a neg one, neg one counter. That'd be sick, right? I don't care. I'll pay four. I don't care. The pay best four, part draw is, eight. <laughs> the best part is you can target himself with it. Oh, yeah, sweet. Like, you can, if there's no other creatures on the board, you do have a way to activate this. You can just be like, make him a seven, seven, draw two. Make him a six, six, draw two more. Like, it's great. I mean, the problem is you're paying mana. So, like, <laughs> unlike Gristlebrand, you can't play this guy and likely draw cards the same turn. So he does have to survive. Someone said Schmidlebrand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and also this is a very unique mana cost assist, so it's probably going to be uh, helping. Yeah, you're never well. going to have two of those. Is this, last, is this last black card? I, either way, I think this card is good. Like, I mean, it's an 8-8 flyer for 8. Like, if you have a way to get this guy into play. You do, for 4 this, mana. This is key in the reanimate deck. I'm trying to remove this guy in the 2-3 that steals permanence. Elk is nice. Those are also both cards I, I we've spoken favorably about. I we Yarok's Fenlarker. This is the second time we've heard of Yarok. One was a blue card and one is a black card. So I'm wondering who is this? Who is this blue black Yarok? This card's pretty strong, I think. Uh it's a one one for two. <laughs> when it enters the battlefield, each opponent exiles a card from their hand. Alright, so wow, that's actually pretty good. It's basically yeah. Mesmeric Fiend at the very least. It's worse than it's better than Mesmeric Fiend. Oh, because they don't get you don't it's get gone. to choose though. Yeah, but you don't get to choose. True. You're so right. So it's it's ravenous rats. It yes okay but, but better but exiled right and then it gets plus one plus one until it improves. it's just a it's just a shade three mana to get plus one plus one is not Ugh. great but if you're playing like four of these how like, is this better than life bane zombie life bane zombie you can you can choose life bane zombie you not only got to choose but it's also a three one with menace like yeah. that was very relevant yeah and couldn't you bring him back from your graveyard no it was a three one with menace uh you got to look at your opponent's hand and choose a white, white or, or green, green card and then get rid of that yeah, zombie was also more strict. Like, if you go turn two this guy, turn three this guy, and like, any number of these more than one is just detrimental to your opponent's hand. You can call it, call it, it's color restricted, 
but that still doesn't make sense because by default you're taking the worst card situationally out of their hand. So the only way that Life Bane right. Zombie was better is if they're not playing green and white. Like a lot of times you might be, they're, they're just going to exile a land with this, right? So like, or, or an eight drop and they have no lands. I and mean, I think getting any green or white card from your opponent's hand is probably better than getting a land, right? So, yeah. I don't know. This card seems decent, though. I think this has got to be the last black card. Seems decent. Which we're back on Aerosol. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're watching on Twitch, we're not going anywhere. We're just going to take a break. But uh, if you're watching on YouTube, slam those like and subscribe buttons. Be sure to look out for the next part that's going to be up tomorrow. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. See ya. I was looking over here again. Costas. It's not here. Costas. It's over here. See you next time. Costas. <laughs>